glory of the Father. I pray that you use me for your honor and glory of the Father. I pray that my words are your words this morning, Father. I pray that it edifies the church, Father. I pray that it serves to encourage us, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. I pray that it teaches us how to be a, a true worshiper of God, Lord Father. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you bless us now. I pray that you multiply this message, Lord Father. I pray that people have the ears to hear, Lord Father, so they can apply it in their lives, Father. I pray that you anoint this message, Lord Father, full of your word, full of your wisdom, full of your anointing, Lord Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you, Lord Father. And I'm asking, Lord Father, that, that you open up our ears to hear the message that you got that you got for us this morning, Father. Father, I pray that, that you use me, Lord Father, to speak to them, Lord Father, what you want to speak to them, Lord Father. And I pray that it touches lives, Father. I pray that it changes lives, Lord Father. I pray that it brings us and draws us closer to you, Father, and at the same time draws us closer to each other, Lord Father. I pray, Lord Father, that this unifies the church of God, Lord Father. Not separate or divided, Father, but unified, Lord Father. I pray that it serves to edify the body of Christ, Lord Father. I ask this, Lord, in a mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior and King. Amen. Amen. We now come to the third couplet. A true worshiper has right relations with others, right? We are called, right, to, to love our neighbor as ourselves, right? We are called to pray, right, and to love and to do good to those who have wronged us, right? Yes. Praise the Lord. Verse 3 says that he will not, that, verse 3 says that he will not, doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Right? It fits perfectly to what Jesus Christ commanded us to do, right, when it comes to dealing with our, uh, to, uh, against an individual, towards an individual that has wronged us, what, the, what Jesus calls an enemy, or what we consider our enemy, right? It teaches us to do no evil to them, right? To our neighbor, it says to, it, Jesus Christ says to pray for them, he says to love them, to do good to them, right? Amen? And, and, and here, uh, uh, David clearly is speaking what Jesus was speaking, right? It says, do it, do it. He says, he says that he will not do evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor, right? We have to have true worshiper relationships with others, right? That's not how a true worshiper is, a true believer of Christ, yeah. right? Genuine worshipers, true worshipers, will maintain right relationships with others. He does not bring harm to them, right? We don't wish them ill will. We don't have a mindset of revenge towards them, right? We don't wish them ill will. We don't we don't curse them, right? We don't curse at them, right? We don't slander them, right? Amen. We don't slander them. He he will not discredit a person in the eyes of others. We're not here. We're not here to try and make someone else look bad or to ruin someone else's re reputation or embarrass them, right? We're not here. We're a true believer of Christ, a true worshiper of Christ does not do that to others. His or her words will be truthful and affirming, right? We're supposed to, we're supposed to be children of the truth, right? We're supposed to be children of the, of the way and the truth and the life, which is Jesus Christ our Lord, right? We're supposed to be the, the children of the Father of lights, right? We're supposed to be children of God, amen? So if, if his words are true, our words need to be truthful as well, right? And affirming. Different from tolerance or silent, right? So many, we live in a society, brothers and sisters, where there are too many Christians are being tolerant and silent instead of being, instead of being people of truth and, uh, and affirmation, right? We can't just sit there idle and by and tolerate that stuff because the scripture says that those, it, 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 the scripture does say that those that commit sin and those that condone it are guilty of death. I would even say and add that those that stay quiet and don't say anything against it, just let it happen, are also guilty. Amen? They're guilty of sin. Right? It's almost like they're condoning that because they're not speaking against it. Right? Amen. So our words should be truthful and affirming. That's how true worshiper of God is. Right? Here are some great questions to ask yourself. Amen? It says, do I treat other people with respect, especially those who have a less important position in life than you do, right? Do I snub at people, right? Do I uh, talk down to others in condensation, amen? A am 
I mean to other people, right? Those are questions that we need to ask ourselves, right? If we are to be a true worshipers of God, right? We're supposed to have the fruit of the Spirit, right? We're supposed to have patience. We're supposed to have love, right? We're supposed to love, have compassion. We're supposed to have long-suffering, right? Amen. We're supposed to have meekness. Yeah. Amen? Praise the Lord. We're supposed to manifest the fruits of the Spirit with others. Nosotros como cristianos, como, como verdaderos, este, este adoradores de Dios tenemos que hacer un espíritu de fruto ¿verdad? un fruto que se manifiesta a, a otra gente que, esto, que posiblemente puede ser nuestro enemigo ¿verdad? ¿qué es lo que Dios is, dijo? que como tenemos que tratar a nuestro prójimo a, y también a nuestro enemigo también ¿verdad? Él dijo que amemos a nuestro enemigo, Él dijo que oremos por el enemigo, Él dice que que, que seamos, que hagamos obras buenas a nuestro enemigo Amen. that is the calling of Christ upon the Christian Right? To be, to do good to, uh, to others. Not to be truthful and affirming, right? Not to treat others with disrespect. Not to snub yeah. at them or slander them, right? Not to treat others with condensation, amen? And not, and not to be mean to other people, amen? That's what a true worshiper of God does. That's how a true worshiper of God behaves, right? Amen. Amen. And I know it's difficult in this time of age, right? Because there's a lot of people attacking you from every side. It's difficult not to react from the flesh and lash out in anger, right? Amen. But then that's not the nature of a Christian, brothers and sisters. That's not a, a, a nature of the, that's not Christian nature, right? The answers to these questions tell us a whole lot about ourselves, right? The fourth couplet comes from Psalms chapter 15, verse, verse 4. Amen. And helps us to understand that a true worshiper will be known by the people he accepts and rejects. David notes that in whose eyes the true worshiper, a vile person, is contemned, whose sinful ways are rejected. Amen. What does the word vile mean? What does the word vile mean? It means that which it means that which morally and spiritually polluted, a dirty and defiled with sin, morally depraved, right? That is what a vile person is. It is a, a, a it, in other words, it's a, a person that's just nasty, right? That is just nasty towards other people, that is crude, right? And, 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 and uh, just flat out mean, right? No compassion, right? Someone that has a, 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 a narcissistic personality, right? A person with narcissistic personality, right? Amen? That is a vile, vulgar person. A person like that is morally depraved, right? God has given them over to a reprobate mind, right? Because they don't, because they they, they realize that there is a God, but they choose to disobey him. They they choose to be to, to fall into their own lusts, right? And to and to do what's inconvenient to them, right? What is convenient for them, but inconvenient to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So they're morally depraved and they're defiled with sin. He will reject sinners in his ways, right? And, and, and here's talking about a true worshiper of God, right? A true worshiper of God rejects the things that sinners do and the ways that they do, right? We're supposed to love people but hate the sin and reject the sin that binds them, right? Yeah. We're supposed to be haters of sin, just like God is, right? But we're supposed to be lovers of people. You see, that's the difference. I always heard other pastors say that we're supposed to, that God loves sinners, right? But that's kind of a little bit twisting it because God hates the sin that binds them, but he loves the people who he created in his own image and likeness. Right? Yes, we were born in sin and it makes us sinners, but he loves the individual, but he hates the sin that they do. Right? In the same way, we are to love people, right? When, uh, uh, just like we, just like Jesus Christ commanded us to love our neighbors ourselves and to to do good unto others and to love our enemy and to pray for them, right? And to good do, do good unto them. Amen. But we're supposed to hate the evil that they're doing. Right? We're supposed to be against the evils of the world. Right? We're supposed to be the enemies of evil. Right? Not the enemies of God. We're supposed to be the enemies of the enemy, and we're, but not enemies of God. Amen. Right? We're supposed to be like Christ. We're supposed to, have, supposed to have the Spirit of God inside of us. Amen? So a true worshiper will be known by the people he accepts and rejects. Amen? 
Hey, the fourth couplet comes from Psalms 15, verse 4, and helps us to understand that a true worshiper will be known by the people who he accepts and rejects. Amen? Un, este, un, un gran, este, una, un, 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 un seguidor verdadero que es adorador de Dios rechaza este, lo mal y rechaza las cosas malas, ¿verdad? Dios nos ha mandado a nosotros por el mandamiento de Jesucristo de amar a nuestro prójimo, ¿verdad? Amar a la persona, ¿verdad? Pero, pero no, no podemos amar los pecados y, los, y, y, y este, las maneras que viven, ¿verdad? Porque Dios... Dios este, ama a la persona, pero no, oh, pero, no, pero no ama a los pecados, ¿verdad? Yo he oído otros, otros pastores que dicen que Dios ama a los pecadores. Eso es este, este, cambiando la palabra de Dios, porque Dios no ama el pecado que está en la persona. Él ama a la persona que fue creída en su, en su imagen y su semejanza, pero Él no ama, Él odia el pecado y la manera de vivir de la persona. ¿Verdad? Right? We're supposed to love our neighbor, but not love as the, their, their ways and their, and their sinful ways, right? Amen. Amen? That's being a godly person. That is being a, a, a true worshiper of God. Amen? Take the notes, right? He, it says he will, uh, it goes on and says he will reject sinners in his ways. That's what true worshiper does. Right? A true worshiper does, doesn't want their defiling, defiling influence associations or partnerships. In other words, they don't want to be dirty or influenced by, 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 by people that commit such grievous sins. Right? Their affluence. Amen? Paul warns us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, he says, Be not deceived. Right? We should not let them deceive us. Yeah, we're supposed to get along with everyone. We're supposed to love our neighbors ourselves. We're supposed to pray for the, our enemy. But we're not supposed to turn around and do the same thing that they do. Right? Amen. We're not supposed to allow them to influence us to affect our character and our actions and our speech. Right? Amen. Just because someone else is cursing like, it, like it's going out of style does not mean that we have to do the same thing. Right? We should not allow, as believers of Christ, as people with the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we should not allow that to dirty and fill and, 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 and fill our souls with filth. Right? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. We're supposed to reject that, right? And it goes on and says, be not deceived, right? Primer Corintios 15, 33, dice, no seas engañado. Right? Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen? Este, este malas comunicaciones corrupta buen, este buen carácter, ¿verdad? Es muy verdad, ¿verdad? Si, si, si tienes un amigo o amiga, tienes que amarlos, tienes que este, llevarte bien con todos, pero no significa que tienes que hacer lo que ellos están haciendo. ¿verdad? Si ellos están diciendo maldiciones, no significa que tú tienes que repetir lo mismo también. ¿verdad? Porque nosotros tenemos el Espíritu de Dios adentro y Dios no, y ese es el templo de Cristo y no quiere que, que ensuciamos el templo de Cristo. Amen. The Holy we, this body right here is not mine, right? When I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, this body right here from head to toe does not belong to myself. This is not body and I cannot do whatever I want, right? It belongs to God and it should not be filthy with filth. Amen. Amen? It is the temple of God. It is what the Holy Spirit, imagine that, right? The emphasis of the holiness of God, the Holy Spirit lives inside this temple. So therefore, I am hope. I should be holy. Yes. Each of us are to be holy, right? The true worshipers of God. It says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. <coughs> Amen? It says, plain as day, isn't it? Evil communications corrupt good manners. It corrupts your character. It corrupts your tongue. It corrupts your heart. It corrupts your mind, doesn't it? Right? And we're supposed to be you know, we're supposed to be a, a Christian that live that live on the power that live that have a spirit of love and power and sound mind, right? We're not supposed to have corrupt minds. We're supposed to be have sound minds, right? Full of love and power, right? Of the Holy Ghost and of a sound mind, right? Praise the Lord. Here is what we will find. A true worshiper will not only move away from those who are at, out of step with God, but he will move into step with those who fear the Lord. In other words, like I was saying again, brothers, we're supposed to get along with everybody, right? But we're not supposed to do what they're doing. Right. We're not supposed to uh, participate in the wickedness and the sinfulness that they're, 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 that they're displaying, right? Amen. So the question that we 
should ask ourselves, who are our role models, right? Who are our role models? Who are those whom I look up to? Who do we look up to, right? Who do we look up to? Who, whose life am I emulating, right? Uh, I remember the scripture where, where Apostle Paul said that uh, he says, follow after my, uh, follow after what I do, do what I do, right? It was basically saying that the righteous things that I do, do the same thing. Emulate what I'm doing, right, as, a, as your help to, uh, to help you with your walk with the Lord, right? So, if I'm doing something that is not right, right, and I'm saying do what I do, I'm going to end up leading you uh, uh, stray away from God, right? I'm going to end up leading you stray away. But if I'm doing righteous things, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm an example, a godly and holy example before you, then that's that, that I am someone that you can emulate, right? So who are you emulating, right? Who are you emulating? Say, so whose actions and character do, do I find offensive? Right? There's a lot of friends, right? Each of us have friends, we have family, whatever the case may be, we have coworkers. Do you find what they do offensive? It should. If it's against God, it should, right? Even though we're still supposed to get along with them, but it should offend you because you have the spirit inside of you. Yeah. Right? If it doesn't grieve your spirit, then I don't know what you have inside of you, brothers and sisters. If you don't, if the stuff that you see around the world that's going on right now don't grieve you, then I don't know what kind of spirit you have inside of you. Amen? If it, if it grieves you, uh, what you see going out there, the sinfulness and the wickedness, then, you, then the Holy Spirit is inside of you and, and the Holy Spirit is also grieving, right? When the Holy Spirit grieves, our spirit grieves with Him, right? Amen? So whose actions and character do you find offensive, right? If it goes against God, it should offend your spirit because it offends the Holy Spirit. These probing questions are always good for the soul, brothers and sisters, because again, the Holy Spirit lives holy. Okay, again, Holy Spirit, right? Let me repeat again. Holy Ghost lives inside of us. It ain't just any ghost, right? It ain't just any spirit, right? It is the Holy Ghost, right? It is God's Spirit lives inside of us. All right? So we shouldn't allow others' influences influence our actions, right? We can still get along with them, like I said. We shouldn't, uh, but we should still not allow or not do what they're doing. Amen? The fifth couplet shows us in verse 4 that a true worshiper has an unwavering commitment even when it may lead to his own loss. Right? In other words, these are people that do things this is like a, a true servant of God, right? That, that serves people without expecting anything in return, right? Not expecting a pat on the back, not expecting any respect, not expecting anything, but because they want to truly serve people, because they truly want to serve God, right? People don't owe us anything. I, you guys don't owe me anything. I faithfully serve His church. Right? And I don't expect to be popular. I don't expect to be uh, to receive a pat on the back. That's not my heart. I just want I just want to be able to serve God faithfully by serving you. Amen. Right? That's the, the heart of the pastor. That's the way it should be. Right? Not just all about the money. Right? That means that the pastor has become greedy. Right? It's all about service. It's about not doing it's serving God without expecting anything in return. Amen. Right? Without expecting anything in return. It doesn't matter if it leads to his own loss. Right? Amen? Here is a man whom David said that swears to his own hurt. He keeps his oath. Here is a man who keeps his word. Right? This is a man or woman of God, a true worshiper, that when he says he's going to do something, he or she keeps it. Right? They just don't make promises that they cannot keep. Right? That's what the Bible says, swear not on things, swear not on God, right? A lot of people say, oh, I swear to, I swear to you know who, right? We're not supposed to swear to, no. right? We're not supposed to swear to the man upstairs, mm -hmm. right? We're not supposed to because it all belongs to God. It's yeah. sacred, right? Yeah. We're not supposed to swear on our own family. We're not supposed to swear to our own mothers, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, your mother was created in his image and his likeness. Everything is the full stool of God. The earth, we're not supposed to swear unto anything, right? We're not supposed to uh, make promises that we cannot keep. If we cannot keep our word, we might as well not keep, we might as well not make any promises, 
Right? <clears throat> Amen? A true woman of God, a true man or woman of God remembers to do what he says he will do. Amen. Right? And he keeps it. He or she keeps it. Right? This passage provoked my own conscience, brothers and sisters, because there have been times in the past, in my past, when I have told people that I would pray for them uh, uh, and do something for them, do them a favor or whatever else case may be, and for whatever reason, either I got too busy or, or I simply forgot, I failed to do it. Right? Each of us have, got, have, uh, have come to that point. Each of us have done that before. Right? Yeah. We have said that we were going to do something and for whatever reason we forgot. It may not have been intentional, but we forgot. Right? That's what we need to be careful Right? When we say well, we're gonna do something, because you better make sure you you better make sure that you keep what that you keep your word of what you say you were gonna do. Right? Amen. Because it affects lives. Yes. Right? Lives can sometimes be on a balance, right? Praise the Lord. I think that most of all of us have, have to admit that we have fallen into the category of a time or two, and the reason we preach the word is so that we can be provoked to good works and repentance. Right? That's the one we realize that we have failed in whatever, whatever, in whatever case may be. We can turn around and repent. Right? Because Jesus Christ is just. Right? If we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Right? A true worshiper will be one who maintains the integrity of his or her word. Right? Integrity. We're supposed to be Christians, believers of God, of integrity, of keeping our word, right? Integrity does not start with our words, but it starts with our heart, right? It's the heart of the matter, right? You ever heard of that? It's the heart of the matter. It depends on what, uh, what whatever, you, whatever you say or whatever you do, it, 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 it's representative of what you, of what you have seated in your heart, Amen. right? Even if you say at the moment, oh, I didn't mean that. No, you did. Yeah. Or now it would have come out, right? Mm -hmm. You had that seated somewhere deep inside the heart. You 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 acted out of that, right? Even if you think you didn't mean it, right? It still came from the heart, amen? Because God searches the heart, right? God searches the deepness of our heart, amen? So that comes to to, to ask ourselves, a true worshiper will be one who maintains integrity of us. So we should be we should be people of integrity, right? Of humility, right? Not boastfulness, not pride, but of humbleness, of integrity and truth, right? Amen. Yep. Praise the Lord. A heart has to be regenerate, born again, if it is to accomplish the will of the Lord. Right? We're supposed to be doing the things of the will of the Lord, right? We're supposed to be in connection with the Spirit, uh, the Spirit of the Lord. We're supposed to be in sync with the will of God, right? How we will we ever know the will of God if we don't read the Bible, brothers and sisters? If we don't open up these pages and read uh, uh, page after page, if we don't open up and read the Scriptures? A lot of people, even I have asked uh, in the past, says, how do I know the will of God? This was when I was a baby in Christ. How will I ever know the will of God? How do I know, right? And the only way to know is to read the Bible, Amen. right? Is to, to seek, is to, to search the scriptures so we can find the answers that we're looking for. Yes. Amen? Because the answers in life, the, the basics in life are here in his word. Right. Amen? It's in his word, brothers and sisters. That's how we can know the will of God. Amen? Praise the, praise the Lord. David informs us that this is a man or woman of God who will stand for what he has promised, he or she promised, to do even if it comes at a great inconvenience or loss to him or her personally. So again, you, you keep your word, it doesn't matter if it ends up affecting you negatively, right? That's a true worshiper of God. Even if you, you end up uh, being inconvenient for you, but you still keep your word, that is a true worshiper of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Furthermore, 
He will not change when there's an urge to bend or to buckle under the pressure. So no matter if whatever it is you're trying to do, a service to others or, or keeping your word, and no matter what challenges you face, you still do everything possible to persevere through it and do what you said you were supposed to do, right? Keeping your word. Because it's, uh, being, being a Christian is all about living a life of integrity, right? Of truthfulness and keeping your word the best that you can. Amen? Peer pressure obviously exists in this world, right? Peer pressure is a challenge for all of us here on earth. No matter how young or how old you are, there is always a tendency to adapt or to change when we get into places where changing is easy, is the easy thing to do and maintaining your commitment is a hard thing to do. It's easy to fall in that trap of comfortness, right? I was like, oh man, this is inconvenient. This is not giving me, I don't like this at all, right? It's inconvenient. I'd rather just sit down and just do nothing, right? I'd rather just quit in the middle and not keep my word. Right? A lot of times it's easy because we're in the flesh, but God wants us to persevere through it. He wants us to keep our word. Amen. He wants us to be true worshipers of God. <clears throat> right? Even in the midst of a tendency to adapt and change when we get in places where changing is an easy thing to do and maintaining your commitment is a hard thing to do. Amen? Dios quiere que mantenemos nuestra palabra, ¿verdad? Cuando, cuando dijimos que vamos a hacer algo... ¿Verdad? Hay que, mantener, hay que mantener nuestra palabra, ¿verdad? Porque tenemos que mantener, un cristiano tiene que ser un cristiano de integridad, ¿verdad? No podemos nomás este, hacer una promesa y luego no, este, no, lo, no lo cumplimos, nos vamos a hacer mirar como mentirosos. Right? Imagine if we kept the promise and then we, don't, and then we break it, we're gonna, we're gonna, our integrity uh, will, will be tainted as being a liar. Do you want to be looked at as a liar? No. Right? We're supposed to be looked at with men and women of God of integrity. Amen. Right? Hombres y mujeres de, 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 de Dios con integridad. Yeah? Ese, ese es un verdadero adorador de Dios. The last couplet deals with money. Right? The last couplet deals with money. Verse 5 says, He that putteth not out his money for usury, nor take its reward against the innocent. In other words, brothers and sisters, we don't use our money or our wealth to take advantage of others, right? To abuse others. For example, the example I was given last Sunday is being an employer. If you're an employer, right, and if you're not paying a decent wage to the to employer that deserves to get paid well, you are abusing your power. You're abusing your wealth. You're abusing the money that God has given you because you didn't earn you. You didn't, that, you didn't make that money on your own. God is the one to bless you for it. Yes, we work hard for our money, but it's not ours, right? It's not ours to abuse, right? It is God's. Amen. It is God's. Us, as believers of Christ, we're supposed to be good stewards of what God has given us, right? So as good stewards, we can't use that money to abuse others, right? We can't use that money to be greedy, right? We can't serve two masters. We can't serve two masters, right? Amen. Either we hold on to one, and hate the other, although or either we hate one and hold on to the other. Yeah. Amen? We can't serve two masters. We can't serve uh, God and mammon, as the scripture says. Right? We cannot be greedy, right? Because the love of money is the root of all evil. Right? El amor al dinero es, el, es la raíz de toda maldad, hermanos. Amen? So it says here, he that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. Again, taking advantage of the innocent, right? Those who, are, those who, who you are abusing are innocent, right? That's what it's talking about. And especially the poor, right? Man, that's the most, uh, to me, that's the nastiest thing I've ever seen when wealthy people take advantage of the poor, Right? They're abusing the, the money, the stewardship that God has has has, a type, has given them to have. Amen. Amen. There are some scholars who say that, that this is a reference to tithing. But the strongest evidence points to lending money that has exorbitant amounts of interest attached to it, right? Also, the abuse of attaching taxes and taxes and interest that are too overly excessive. Doesn't that sound familiar? 
right? Overtaxing someone, adding too much interest where it's too impossible for someone to pay, especially if you're poor, especially if you don't have a job, right? Especially if you don't make enough money. Amen. Amen? <laughs> Moses had condemned this practice very strongly. In fact, to take advantage of the poor in this manner was forbidden, right? And we see that a lot of going on nowadays. Moses says in Exodus 22, verse 25, Moisés dijo en Éxodo, capítulo 22, versículo 25, if thou lend money, all right, if you're the one that is the lender, right, if you're lending money to someone else, if you thou lend money to any of my people, the people of God, right, to my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not, thou shalt not be to him as an user. In other words, you shall not abuse them. Right? If you're gonna lend the money, you gotta be fair, right? You gotta be fair and balanced, right? You gotta be fair. You gotta be fair. If you're gonna be fair to the rich or to the middle class, you also should be, should be fair to the poor, Amen. right? You can't be charging interest, uh, uh, higher interest on the poor and, and lower interest on, on the on the middle income class or, or high class. That's usury. That's abuse, right? And it goes on, thou shalt not be to him an user, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. Right? Now, neither shall you abuse that person. Right? Mo Moses also said in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 36, take thou no usury of him. Right? Or increase, but fear thy God. So you better make sure you don't do it, brothers and sisters. Amen? A person that fears the Lord does not take advantage of someone else. Amen? It says that thy brother may live with thee. Amen? Let me repeat it again. Take thou no usury of him, nor or increase, but fear thy God, that thy brother may live with thee. Amen? There were other regulations for money in the Mosaic Law. Había otras regulaciones del dinero en la ley mos mosaica. Estamos en Deuteronomio, este, capítulo 23, versículo 19 a 20. En Deuteronomio 23, verse 19 to 20, it says, Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Amen? To a family member. A lot of times that's what happens, right? A, a, a family member does someone else, uh, uh, another family member wrong because of money. Right? There's always arguments and fights of money. What happens to, to when the parents die, right? And they leave a will, or 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 uh, the parents leave a, a certain amount of money or insurance, and they're off, often fighting and bickering because of money, right? Because each of them want a fair share, right? Here it says, "Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother," right? And here's also you can also uh, look at it as a brother or sister in Christ. We cannot. Lend, thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Usury of money or usury of victuals. Uh, and here it's talking about different kinds of abuses. It ain't just also money, it's also other things as well, right? Usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Anything that you're lending someone, uh, some, uh, some, uh, lending someone to have temporarily, you cannot abuse them because of that. No. Amen? There cannot be any abuse of any matter. Verse 20 says, Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to thee in the land where thou goest possess. In other words, everything that God has given you is not for you to abuse. Right? That's what I was saying earlier. Everything that God has given you in your hands, you cannot use that to abuse others. Amen. Right? You cannot use that to abuse others. Amen? Because it's a sin against God. Right? Deuteronomy, the Deuteronomy, capítulo 24, versículo 10 a 13, dice, Deuteronomy 24, 10 through 13, says, When thou doest lend thy brother anything, thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge. Amen? Thou shalt not stand, thou shalt stand abroad in the man to whom thou Thou, thou doest lend shall bring out the pledge I brought unto thee. In other words, when, when you lend someone, that's, you're not supposed to be going over there and bugging and bugging. Hey, when are you going to give it back to me? Right? You're supposed to let the, allow them, you're supposed to lend it to them so they can finish using it for whatever they're going to use. And then they'll come back 
and, and give it back to you, right? We're not supposed to do that, brothers and sisters. And we're and, and, and the same in the same token, if, if someone lets you borrow something, you better make sure you return it. Right? That's also abuse of someone else lending it to you, brothers and sisters. Amen? It goes both ways. The lender cannot abuse them to say, hey, when, when are you going to give it back to me? Right? In the same manner, right, when you're done with what, what, what has been lent to you, you're supposed to return it to the rightful owner. Right? You're not supposed to keep it. It's not supposed to be uh, uh, finders, keepers, losers, sweepers. Right? We're supposed to return it to its proper owner. It's not supposed to be, ah, he never asked for it, so I can keep it. I know that because that's what people say. I've heard other people say that. Ah, uh, it's lost. Uh, he, uh, he, he never asked for it, so I'm not going to return it. I can just keep it. Right? That's stealing. That's abusing the person that has lended you uh, an item that he was graciously lending you. Man. The same token, do not abuse those who are you, that you uh, letting them borrow your things. Right? That's prohibited by God. Verse 11 says, Thou shalt stand abroad, and the man to whom thou uh, doest lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee. Verse 12, And if the man be poor, now it's talking about the poor, right? If the man be poor, thou shalt not sleep with his pledge, right? Thou shalt not sleep with his pledge. Verse 13, And in any case, thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down, that he may, that he may sleep in his own raiment, and bless thee. And it shall be righteousness unto thee before the Lord thy God. Okay? So it's a righteous thing, right? Right? For you to let someone else lend something. And it's a righteous thing for that person to, to give it back. Right? You're not supposed to keep it. Right? You're supposed to give it back. Amen? The same thing. When someone asks you to lend them something, right? You're supposed to let them, let them borrow it. Right? supposed to let them because it does not belong to you. It belongs to God. It is not for you to abuse. It's not for you to steal because if you steal from, from, uh, from someone else, you're stealing from God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen? You're stealing from God because it belongs to Him. And, and the scripture says that a thief shall not enter the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Ultimately, we must make certain that we do not allow ourselves to be bought by the world's system of affluence and craving, greed, and love for money. Right? True. The end of Psalms chapter 5, verse 5, 15, verse 5, gives us a great assurance. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Right? He who lives a righteous life shall never be moved. No matter what happens, no matter the temptation to, to, uh, to, to do the other thing, you shall not be moved. You shall not be shaken. You'll be, God will give you the strength not to commit such sins. Amen. Amen? Such abuses. Right? God will maintain you to be a true worshiper of God. Amen? After all these qualifications, there is an eternal promise that is similar to what, what Peter wrote to the scattered saints in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Según Pedro, segundo Pedro, capítulo 1, versículo 10, yes, dice, Wherefore, the, it says, Wherefore, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, it's talking about brothers and sisters in Christ. So here, Peter is talking to all of us here, brothers and sisters in Christ. Brethren, give diligence, Right? It says, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Right? Let me read it again. Give diligence, be diligent to make, to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Right? If, in other words, if you follow these, these godly principles, you shall never fall. Right? The godly principles that I spoke about a true worshiper of God. If you follow these godly principles, you shall never fall. Right? You'll, you'll, you'll continue to walk in the straight and narrow. Right? You'll continue living a life that pleases the Lord. You'll continue being a worshiper of a true worshiper of God. Amen. You know why I say that? Because a true worshiper of God manifests in obedience to God. Amen. Manifests. In the reading of the word of God and in the obedience to the word of God. Amen? That's what a worshiper does. 
Right? Praise the Lord. If you do these things, brothers and sisters, you will never be shaken. This is a man or a woman of God who is planted by the rivers of water, bearing fruit, not, not withering of the leaves, and prospering, right? This is a man or woman of God who has a foundation on the rock, which is Jesus Christ the Lord, and the storm will assail. In other words, we're, we're, we can go through storms here and there, but it won't shake us because we're standing on a solid rock foundation, which is Jesus Christ the Lord, which is the truth, the way, and the light, which is the word of God, right? <clears throat> Remember when Jesus Christ told Peter, upon this rock, uh, uh, upon this rock I shall, be, I shall build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. Right? Remember that? We are the church. Right? We are the church of God. Amen? And, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us as long as we stand on the rock of our salvation. Amen. As long as we stand on the word of God. Amen? As long as we stand firm on the word of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. So no matter the storms, no matter what the enemy throws at us, we will not be shaken. Amen? We, the enemy will not prevail. Amen? The enemy and the storms will not prevail against us. Right? We will, be, we will overcome them. Right? Because Christ said that in this world you shall have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen? So we will become overcomers if we follow these godly principles. Amen? <coughs> Praise the Lord. Stephen Lawson has written a commentary on Psalms. In addressing Psalm 15, he gave the following story. A mother was visiting her son at college. Upon entering his dorm room, her eyes swept across the walls, which were all covered with more than a dozen suggestive pictures. Her heart was grieved, but she said nothing. Several days later, the mailman delivered a package to the young man. It was a gift from his mother, a beautifully framed print illustrating the truth of Psalms, chapter 15, verse 1 through 2. The boy hung the scripture that was, that was in calligraphy on the wall above his desk. And the more he looked at the verses, the more he began to feel convicted by his other pictures on the wall. Right? You see the power of the word of God, brothers and sisters? The more that we look on it, the more we seek it. Amen? The more that we, we meditate on it, it changes us, right? It brings yes. conviction to the heart. Yes. And the story goes on. That night, as he went to bed, he removed the pinup picture which hung closest to the framed verses. Then the next day, another picture was, con was consigned to the wastebasket. Waste basket. Day after day, the rest of the pictures began to disappear from the walls until only one frame remained, the illustrated print of God's Word. Praise God. It's amazing what the Word of God can do. Yeah. How, it, how it can uh, cause us and commit us to get rid of our past to get rid of, of our, our, our fleshly things, right? And just keep the word of God in our hearts and meditate on it. Amen? He goes on. The key to living a holy life is to live a scripture-saturated life, brothers and sisters. Saturated with the word of God. When God's word dwells within a person, sin diminishes. Amen? When we saturate our lives and when the word of God is seeped inside of our hearts and our souls, the sin diminishes. Yes. The light of his holiness always exposes areas of darkness, driving them away. Right? You don't want to do them anymore. You, you're, you're, it makes you upset. It grieves your spirit, the sinfulness, and you can't help but to get rid of it, to purge it out of your life. Right? You hate your old ways, right? You hate your old manners, right? You it grieves you, right? And you and you and you have a desire to keep your, your temple, the temple of God, which the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you, pure and sanctified. Right? That's why we are to live a sanctified life. Right? A sanctified way of life. 
Because the, because the scripture says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Right? That is the commandment of God, brothers and sisters. Be ye holy, for I am holy. For I dwell in you. Right? What did Jesus say? If, if you, if it says, dwell in me and I in you, and you will bear much fruit. But without me, you can't do anything. Right? Without Christ inside of you, you are nothing. You can't do anything. You know, every time that you try to do something without Christ, you, that a disaster will follow. Amen? Disaster will follow. Sadness and depression will follow. Amen? Living a righteous life requires focusing and meditating upon the glory and the majesty of His Word. Amen? The knowledge of the scriptures when united with faith, because faith coming by hearing, hearing the word of God as you're hearing now, tends to drive out the practice of sin. Amen? Praise the Lord. Just like brother, just like Sister Felipe was talking about that, that, that when she hears the word of God, she keeps it in her heart. Right? That's how you get faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God.
Because it's a sin if you don't fulfill your end of the bargain, right? end of the contract of, of if you say you were going to do something, you need to keep your word. Una persona que es aceptada de Dios, este, si dice que, que va a hacer algo, este, tiene que cumplirlo. ¿verdad? Si firmas un contrato, tienes que cumplirlo. ¿verdad? An acceptable person of God takes great care with how money is used and he, uh, and he or she does not receive bribes. Right? Una persona que es aceptada de Dios cuida, este, es cuidadoso con el dinero que usa y, y él o ella no recibe este, uh, no recibe este, no, re, no recibe abusos del dinero. Amen. This brings a security to a saint of God, doesn't it? This brings security to a saint of God, but it also brings us to a place where we are prone to see our need for God. Amen? I pray. I pray, brothers and sisters that we ask God sincerely sincerely from the heart with a humble heart to help us in those areas in those biblical principles brothers and sisters because we're supposed to live, live, be living a, a, a life of faith that is pleasing to the Lord that manifests the Christ likeness to the world that manifests the salt and light of the world. Amen. That manifests the light that is sitting on a hill for all to see. To manifest a light where people won't bring reproach to us. To where they won't call us hypocrites. Amen. Let us, bro, let us stand this morning. Let us bow our heads. I invite all of you to come to the altar this morning. To surrender your heart to God. To help you in whatever area you're still working on. In the area that God is still working with you. To help you in those areas of godliness, of holiness in your life. Of personal conduct that is blameless. A life that is characterized for righteous acts. A life that is characterized that speaks truth sincerely. That does not slander others. Does not hold, that does not hold grudge towards others. That does not bring reproach to other people. That does not cause pain purposely to others. That distinguish be themselves between vile people and righteous people. That holds to the sanctity of an oath or a contract. That takes great care with how money is used. And he or she does not receive bribes. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we ask that you help us be men and, men and women of God of integrity. Señor, quiero, quiero que nos ayude a nosotros a ser hombres y mujeres del Señor, de Dios, con integridad, con, 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 con buen carácter de Dios, que no, de no traer reproche a otra gente, de conducirnos en un modo que no trae reproche, que hablemos la verdad sinceramente, que no hablemos mal a de otras personas. Que no traemos reproche a otras personas. Que no causemos dolor a otras personas. De tomar la santidad de nuestra palabra seriamente. De no abusar el dinero que Dios nos, da, nos ha dado a nosotros. Lord, help us, Lord work in each area of our lives that we lack, Father. We thank you, God, this morning. I pray that, that you purge our hearts from any negative uh, thoughts, and that you purge our minds from any negative thoughts, that you search our hearts and get rid of, Father, and convict our hearts to get rid of any wickedness, any impurities, Father, that grieves you, Lord. Father, we do not want to grieve your Holy Spirit. We do not want to grieve your way, our, uh, your, way, your holiness, Father. Because we know your Holy Spirit lives inside of us. 
We know that, that we are to be holy because you are holy. We know that we are to conduct ourselves in a manner that pleases you. We know and we are aware, Father, and we ask that you help us live a faith that pleases you. Father, we may fail, but I pray that you give us a conviction to repent always and seek your forgiveness, God. Because we know your scripture, Lord. That we know that we confess with our mouths. That if we confess that you are faithful and are just to, to, uh, to uh, forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Father, help us to continue to be the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, help us keep your word in our hearts. Father, I pray that, that our faith grew uh, 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 as we heard the word of God in, through our ears, Father. Because your word says that faith coming by hearing, hearing the word of God. Father, I pray that today's word uh, edify this local body, that it, that it edify the body out there on Facebook Live, Lord Father. Father, I pray that now you bless us and be with us and never leave us nor forsake us, God. Father, you know our struggles. You know what we are going through. You know the temptations that we go through, Lord. You understand our struggle. Father, we ask that you be our strength in our times of weakness so we can be that true worshiper of God, so we can be uh, the, the best representation of Christ that we can be your power of the Holy Spirit that we can be to others, Lord Father. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And amen. At this time, I'd like for us to pray for today's offering, which is for missions. In this moment, we're going to pray for the offering of missions. 